Hi, and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden... Oh, from Homs. Welcome to another tutorial from Homs. The name had to change because um, the Golden Ribbon was shared with a charity, and I didn't want to have any issues with that. So I decided to um, keep the Hummingbird insignia, but to change the name to Homs, which just means Hummingbird Studio. So, different name, same person, same great content. All right, but talking about content, Today we're going to be looking at um, the shooting star motion graphic tutorial and it will be done in Blender 3.6. Lots of things have happened to me in between the time of the last tutorial and this one. Maybe I'll do a video to talk about those things, lots of ups and downs. But as for now, let's get straight into, into the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the shooting star tutorial here. We have our star here that I imported. And the first thing I did is that I added an empty. And you can do that just by, just put the 3D cursor here so that we can have the empty appear here. Just shift and add an empty and you're going to add a sphere. And then I scaled mine down. And then we just parented it, this to the sphere with control and P. Good, and then we animated this star. So the star here bounces up, and this is a series of three stages of animation. So you have the stage here where it squashes, and that you're gonna use a scale. Then you're gonna head and use a scale to squash this. So if we go to the empty, we can see that we have a scale here, and let's look at the nodes as well. Look at the dope sheet. Cool. So we have a scale from here to here. We scale on the y-axis. Good. Allow the star then to scale on the y-axis, but by increasing the y-axis amount. <coughs> and with that, right, we get the squash and bounce. And then we have the star return to its original shape. So using the scale to turn to its original shape. After we scale it, we use the Y axis here, and we just have it jump. So I have a Y, insert the Y from the compression of energy here, which is the anticipation stage. And then we set another keyframe up to the top for the Y, to about here. So uh, I think we have the keyframe about frame 21. Good, so the star goes up and um, stops around frame 21 so from 10 to frame 21 star goes up and in between that we have the scale return to normal so the stretch is for the indication of the of the power of the lift off causing the star to deform along the y-axis and then when the the initial takeoff force decreases we see the star return to its original state lastly we'll have the star rotate and that rotation is roughly 27 frames at 32 frames so jump rotate cool so with this we have the initial bounce of the star it has a nice kitty kind of gelatin type of effect nice cartoony effect good you can see how it targets children or it targets a very childlike animation cool so we have this now, we have the turn. The next step is to add our light, our light streaks. Cool, so for the light streaks, we have them enabled now. And if we just play it, we can see that the star has light streaks here. And all of these are just planes. So they just, if you add a plush and add a plane, all of these are just planes. And we will go to our shader material and we add the gradients to this plane. So if we're gonna go into the gradient editor, um, the shade editor and see what we actually did. Cool, so if we just select one of these. We have one selected, let's look at our node group. So you're gonna have the texture coordinate. It's gonna be attached to a mapping node. It's gonna be attached to a gradient texture. You're gonna have a color ramp. You're gonna have a transparent BSDF shader a mix shader and a material output 
and you want to join the object to the vector the vector to the vector for gradient te um, texture from mapping to gradient texture then from the gradient texture to the ramp color to fact um, to fact and then you want to join the color of the ramp to the bottom shade of the mix shader the transparent bsdf to the top shade to the top arm shader and then the alpha from the color ramp to the alpha of the fac and lastly the shader to the surface and this will give you the gradient then you add whatever colors you want and that will give you the color gradient that you're looking for so if we change this to changes to over to our material mode and have it selected let's change this blue to say a pink and we can see that we're getting pink hues at the bottom here cool all right the only part of this now is to change it to alpha and to make this alpha you simply just have to reduce the alpha one of the colors and then you have to navigate to the material and you have to change this from alpha from what would be opaque to alpha blend and that will tell blenders material nodes that you want to enable true alpha transparency and wherever it finds the alpha in the material in the shader or the material it will apply the alpha blend cool and you just simply do that for all of them except for the middle one which is inverted Oops, sorry about that so second for the middle one that is inverted and that will give you your trails and all you have to do now is animate it on rise and have it disappear as the star comes to rest so it gives the indication that the it's, it's showing you the power of the frost um, by using an opposite force like an irresistant force right to show you that there's there's an actual up frost happening there and gives some um, reality and gives validity to the to the motion cool so that's the light that's the light streaks there and you just have to animate the alpha so you can see here we just have the alpha animated to have it appear and disappear and last is the light is the burst of light which is we enable it so as the star zooms out, we see these lines to the side. Cool. Let's take a look at one of them. So for this now, for the lines to the side, I'm just going to go ahead and show you that. We're going to have a circle. Node, I use 64. Um, I use 64 for the amount of um, vertices in a circle. You don't have to. So what we do here is that we highlight half of the circle and we drag it down. Good. And that will give us a nice rounded type of shape here. Cool. Similar to the shapes that we see here. Nice and rounded. Cool. Then we just go ahead and give this a material. And um, so we select everything, press F to create a face then we're going to create a material make it emission and we want white so we don't have to change the color any at all <coughs> cool now that we have this we can go ahead and add some more with an array modifier so I just use a simple array modifier here and we're going to add more we don't want it along the x-axis we want this along the y Cool. And we want it to have about a count of three and to give a bit more space than that. So once you space out in accordance to what you want, that way you have three of them. But we're not gonna we've done the three already, so we're only gonna focus on one. Then you would apply it, and um, once you apply that, so if we add the modifier once more, we'll just apply, you would apply it here once you're finished. And then once you apply, you can begin to add the shape keys. So we're going to navigate to shape key editor. Good. And for this type of thing where I want it to disappear, 
I have two shape keys, one shape key to bring the stroke up like so to the top and then one shape key to make the whole thing disappear. So this is the one for the top that should be key one and the, for it to disappear we simply just zoom in and we're going to select all of the of the vertices here except for the very top one I'm going to press S and I'm going to press 0 <coughs> excuse me and that changes the vertice to a that changes all the vertices to scale at 0 which leads to one single point then we want to add the snap tool here and make sure that it's snapped to vertex and then we simply just move the vertex until we snap it to the one vertice that we did not select and that will cause the whole thing to disappear so we activate this animation first and then we activate this one and cause it to disappear at fast speeds so to look at that in a real sense let's go ahead and just animate it quickly so we have um, take off the value insert value about um, this length cool good and about two frames afterwards we insert another keyframe and we insert a keyframe here and we insert a keyframe this one too <coughs> so two frames afterwards you want the second keyframe which is the disappear keyframe to initiate and you want this keyframe which is keyframe one to go back to value of zero and we get an instance where it just disappears nicely cool and so that light burst effect is a is applied to the whole star here for each one of these so all we do is that we scale in and then we have it disappear so have it scale in and then we have it disappear with this keyframe and that's how you do the light burst effect okay this is the end of the shooting star tutorial i hope you enjoyed the tutorial hope it was helpful for you um, it's a shorter truncated form of the tutorial so it doesn't have all the detail and nuance that i'm typically used to providing if you're interested in that type of detail and nuance you can go to my patreon where i've truncated where i've cut this video into five different steps and each step is um, explained with nuance and detail so that you can understand every step right so if you're interested in that type of content and you want to, to to see all of the nuance of it then you can go ahead to my patreon and see the list of fives and it's available to any tier and you can access those also at certain tier levels you can access svg and blender information um, in terms of the configuration files right so you can download them and use them to your to your um to whatever your pleasure to whatever your needs are right so i found that shorter content works better on youtube long form content doesn't work super well when it comes to tutorials and um, as such that i'm going to try and keep them as short and truncated as possible all right so until i see you again with another tutorial get up and design a new dawn later <laughs>